As you guys are probably aware, contrast to how I made the Demons EP, I've decided to do Castles in the Sky all by myself, which means no producer, no mix engineer, no recording engineer. And to give you guys an understanding on why I'm deciding to do this, I thought I'd give a generalized overview on what it's like to put together a song and release it and how artist supporters can get behind the release and how the action of artist supporters ultimately affects uh, the fate of the song. Number one, song selection. Over a period of time, an artist might have anywhere between five to a hundred songs and through performing or listening or getting feedback, um, they're gonna get together a short list of songs that they intend to record. And this is the group of songs that they have the deepest connection with. Number two, choosing the team to create the song. So working backwards from the producer, a producer is somebody who understands the artist's vision and also the audience that they're trying to connect to. A lot of research goes into choosing a, a producer because it's a, a multi-dimensional role that not only requires musical skills and engineering skills, but they have to inspire the best performance out of the artist, which takes a degree of psychological awareness and it definitely helps if they're a mad hang. The sound engineer is somebody who brings to life the sounds that the artist and the producer are imagining. So if I've got a particular drum sound or a guitar sound in mind, they'll know what mics to use, what preamps to use and how to use them in order to create it. Once the performance is on tape, this is when the mix engineer steps in and this is a bit of a hard one to explain to the non-musician, but basically like your car stereo, the bass, the treble, the mids, the pan, the fade, just imagine like thousands of those. The mix engineer sits for hours working those knobs for each individual element of every instrument in order to put it together and make it sound like it should be on a record. Now once it's mixed, that's when the mastering engineer steps in who has pretty much better versions or different types of knobs um, compared to the mix engineer and they'll go to town tweaking those so that it sounds pretty much the best that it can sound on all different types of systems. Number three, release strategy. This is one of the most expensive parts of the process and for some it's actually more expensive than creating the songs because you've got film clips, online content, other supportive material that all come together and are put out there into the world generally with the help from a publicist and a radio plugger. Like a good successful strategy um, will connect the artist and the songs with the communities that it most aligns with. And after that, it's literally up to the people. So that's a really oversimplified walkthrough of the process and obviously there's a lot more to it than that. But if an artist follows that model, they're generally gonna be up for anywhere between $3,000 to $10,000 per release and it also depends on who you're working with and that puts a lot of pressure on the song to succeed in order for the artist to get their money back and especially if you have a family to feed or you have all sorts of other financial pressures it can be really tough and this is actually how I've operated every time I release a song that's the model I follow for doing it myself. When I decided to get back into music after burning out, I made a deal with myself that I would eliminate unhealthy pressures that would threaten my capacity to release music long term. At the end of the day, I want to be able to release and perform forever. And I can't do that if I'm always financially overextending myself and putting such unhealthy pressures on the song to perform. Even emotionally, it turns what should be a cathartic experience into something that's more or less like a grind. So for Castles in the Sky, I decided to experiment by seeing how far I can take it myself by working outwards from my own strengths. Everyone told me that I should be producing and recording my own music, do it for a living, back yourself, so that's what I've done, but only with the condition that I could draw on the ears of people that I trust that understand my vision in order to stay anchored and not lose myself down that crazy creative rabbit hole. With help from my mates, I recorded it, I performed it, I mixed it, I mastered it, and now I'm making a very brave decision to not hire a publicist radio plugger, not because I don't value it, but I just can't afford it. And it's a very hard decision for me because I operate under the belief that if you want a song like your baby to have every chance of succeeding, you should give it everything. And for me, it was always a publicist and radio plugger, but I can't afford it. So I'm gonna experiment and see how far I can take it myself and with help from you guys, my community. So here are some simple ways that you can get behind the song, if you like it. 
Little disclaimer, this is only if you like it. Like there's no point in getting behind something that you don't like because I'm looking to your response to see what you guys like. If you get behind something you don't like, I'm gonna continue to create more of what you don't want. So if you don't like it, don't get behind it. Five, how you guys can help. Subscribe, now that's a yuck word for me, I hate it. It's used all the time, but it is an important word and I'm gonna to explain to you how it affects an artist. When you guys subscribe to an artist's Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube channel, mailing list, whatever, you'll get a notification when a song is being dumped. Now, a platform will amplify the subject of a buzz. So if all you guys are listening to newly released material at the same time, the platform will recognize it as, wow, there's something happening here, and will promote that and connect that to similar user communities that aren't in touch with the song, and it's a great way for an artist to expand their following. So sharing. Another dirty word, but both the song and the lead up content. Like, I love creating these videos. I do it to give you guys insight on what goes on in my world, but it's also an opportunity for other communities that I'm not connected to to see what I do. So, if you like it and you think that somebody else in your network would appreciate it, share it. Even better, if it's a personality that has a large following, tag them. All these little things help to get me connected with communities that I'm not actually connected with and in turn grows my fan base. Sharing really matters, especially if the artist is doing it themselves. It's literally how many artists have broken. Um, it's because they've got a really aggressively passionate fan base. And that's it. I'm gonna end this by paraphrasing something that a really respected music manager said in an interview, John Watson, said that how an artist's immediate community responds to a song is a reflection of how the masses are gonna respond. So this means that you know, if your song doesn't resonate with your local community, then spending $100,000 on marketing is unlikely to make a difference. Now I'm finally coming around to accept that, you know, it is out of my hands, which means the pressure's on you guys. 